So great news in cancer treatment doesn't always make headlines, but that's what I'm here for. A major advance in chondrosarcoma treatment and cancer treatment in general was reported and barely covered in the news. But it deserves attention because it's not just promising for chondrosarcoma, it should have implications for many other cancers too. Welcome to Elevating Cancer Treatment, where I explain the science, bust myths, and help you navigate your cancer journey with clarity and confidence. If that sounds like your kind of content, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell. And if you find it helpful, please share. It really helps get accurate information out there. I'm Dr. Jay Chaplin. I'm a PhD, not an MD. So everything here is educational. It's not medical advice. Every cancer is unique, so always consult your care team before making decisions. Before we dive in, I've made a free guide for you. 10 Things to Elevate Your Chemo Journey. It's packed with practical tips you can start using today. Grab it using the link down in the description below. So, a few days ago, a major advance in chondrosarcoma treatment and cancer treatment in general was reported and barely covered in the news. But it deserves attention because it's not just promising for chondrosarcoma, it should have implications for many other cancers too. So, here's what's happening. This was a phase two clinical trial for a targeted antibody therapy designed to treat chondrosarcoma. That's a rare soft tissue cancer related to bone cancers like Ewing sarcoma, but it's found in the cartilage instead. Now, most phase two trials are very small. Their goal is not to find effectiveness or really show safety, but to find the right dose to do the larger trials in. This one, however, did find efficacy. The results were a 52% lower risk of progression or death and this is for a cancer that normally doesn't respond to chemotherapy at all. That's huge. And the study ran for just three years, not the usual five, meaning the real world benefit is probably even greater. This was against placebo. This wasn't with anything else. This was just this drug or nothing. So to make it even more impressive, all the patients in this trial had inoperable chondrosarcoma and they were never checked for the actual treatment target. So this wasn't some easy to treat group and it probably had folks in it who couldn't possibly be helped by the drug. So how does this antibody therapy actually work? It targets something called death receptor 5 or DR5. That's a protein that tells cells to self-destruct when things go very wrong. Normal cells rarely have DR5 on their surface, but many cancer cells do and they have a lot of it. So when the antibody binds to DR5, it activates it and the cancer cell dies, it commits suicide. So here's why this matters to you, and it matters to many more people than it sounds like. This DR5 protein isn't just on chondrosarcoma. It's also found on osteosarcoma, Ewing's sarcoma, breast cancer, ovarian, cervical, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer, colorectal cancers, and even some myelomas. So if this therapy continues to succeed, it will likely open doors far beyond chondrosarcoma, that one rare cancer type. Now, if you've been following clinical trials like I do, you might be thinking, wait, haven't we seen DR5 therapies before? Yes, but earlier attempts have failed. So why did this one work? There are three key reasons, dealing with both the science and the business. First, even if two antibodies target the exact same protein, they can behave very differently. Antibodies are large, complex molecules, and how they bind makes all of the difference. If they bind here versus here versus here versus here, some will block a receptor, others will activate it. They'll have different functions, different functionalities. This particular antibody binds in just the right way to activate DR5 fully, and that's likely what made it successful. They actually went back after the other failures and studied the biology of the receptor and changed the antibody format, doubling up on the parts that bind DR5 so that it would bind four copies other than the standard two with a regular antibody, like from other companies. That's really smart and causes much stronger activation. This is also why pharmaceutical companies often develop multiple antibodies against the same target. The chemistry of binding can make one a breakthrough, another meh, and a third a complete dead end. So second thing going on here, companies often choose to test new drugs in very specific cancers, like in this case, chondrosarcoma, ones with very high need, like aggressive or inoperable things, such as this case. That makes trials much more likely to succeed, much easier to recruit for, but it also limits how the drug can officially be used later. 
Once approved, it'll be licensed only for that condition. In this case, not just chondrosarcoma, but inoperable chondrosarcoma. Doctors can prescribe it off-label for other cancers, but there's a catch. Insurance usually won't cover it. And some doctors won't even hear about it because it won't appear in their standard guidelines. It's not for that cancer, even though it can be used there. So it's not in the guidelines, and that means you may have to bring it up yourself and educate your medical care team. So previous trials didn't do this. They didn't use this format. They covered many different cancers all at the same time. That's a lot of trials that rapidly bankrupted the small companies developing them, and it made the clinical trials messy. They were harder to get a positive through, and they used a ton of money. Not a great business decision. This one has done well. Third, right now we don't have a routine test to check whether your cancer cells actually express DR5, what we would call a companion diagnostic. So most chondrosarcoma cells do express DR5, but let's say 10% of the people in that phase two trial didn't have DR5 on their tumor. They couldn't possibly benefit, but their data still counted. That means that the real success rate in a case like that for folks who did have DR5 positivity would be closer to 58% than 52%. So as this therapy moves forward, developing a biomarker test for DR5 will be crucial, especially if we want to use it in other cancers and push it out to those where only some tumors express it, like myeloma, 50% or so. So where does this leave us? This therapy still needs to pass phase three trials and it will go into chondrosarcoma first. These are the large scale studies needed before FDA approval, but the early data are really exceptional and they can mark a turning point for multiple hard to treat cancers. Now, just because it will be approved first, assuming it tests well for chondrosarcoma, it's going to get pushed out into colorectal cancer and Ewing sarcoma as well, hopefully others, but it will still be off-label, if not for the type of cancer, but for the kind of indication. I'll be following this one closely and I'll keep you updated as results come in. This is a great opportunity to educate your medical team. If you want to go deeper into your own treatment options, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions and medical advocacy to help you make sense of the science and work with your care team more effectively. You can learn more on our website. It's linked down below. Please, Give us a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and share for more science-based cancer insights and better awareness. And I'd love to hear from you. Have you or someone you know ever tried an off-label treatment? How did that work? What challenges did you face? Cost, access, or even just educating your medical team? Please share your experiences in the comments below. Those stories not only help me target information to be of better use for you, but it also helps other people learn and feel less alone on this journey. Again, I'm Dr. Jay Chaplin. Thanks for watching Elevating Cancer Treatment. I'll see you in the next video.